morning guys or afternoon actually would depends on what time of the day it is that i have you in class um so this is our 6.1 lesson we're ta starting to talk about the unit circle and trig functions and stuff like that so the first thing we're going to hit on is the difference between radians and degrees you guys are super used to degrees we talk about everything in degrees 90 percent of the time but now we're going to talk about radians in our unit circle and you've heard about this before so the first thing we're going to look at is changing from degrees to radians and vice versa. And there's a conversion factor. 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. It's half of a circle right here. Um, a whole circle is 360 or 2 pi is the way we look at it. And our conversion factor is either 180 over pi or pi over 180. And we'll talk about that in just a second as we move along here. So in our first example, <clears throat> it asks us to express 60 degrees in radians. So the first thing I'm going to tell you guys to do is write down 60 degrees, and 60 is over 1. So what we want to do is we want to convert to radians. That means we want our degrees to cancel out. So it's either going to be 180 over pi or pi over 180. So I'm going to place 180 degrees on the bottom because we want degrees to do what? Cancel out. So what you have on the top and the bottom that are the same, you can cross out. And then we just simplify. I can... 10 goes into 60, 10 goes into 18. So I have 6 pi over 18, and then I say, oh wait, can I simplify that more? Absolutely. You can divide the top and bottom by three, which would give you two pi over six. Oh look, I can simplify again, divide by two, and I get pi over three. Some of you will see that you can simplify more throughout. I just took little steps along the way, but you'll have your calculator so you can kind of look at it that way. Again, if we come to number two, it says express pi over six radians in degrees. So look, I start off with pi over six, so now my conversion factor is going to be pi over 180 or 180 over pi. Since I want my pi's to cancel out, I'm going to put pi down here on the bottom and 180 on the top. And if you notice, I have a pi on the top, pi on the bottom, they cancel out. Six goes into 180 how many times? 30 times. So when we convert pi over 6 to degrees, it's 30 degrees. Simple as that. All right, now we're going to talk about two positive and two negative coterminal angles with the angle degree of 30. In standard position, just means in normal. If I start here, I start on the x axis and I go up to 30 degrees. Okay. Coterminal, like a co captain, a co pilot, what you're doing is you're finding angles that are 360 degrees away from this angle given. So what we're going to do is if we are in degrees, we're starting in degrees at 30 degrees, that means you would add 360 and you would subtract 360 because we're trying to find positive and negatives. So if I want to find two positives to 30 degrees, I would say, okay, 30 degrees, I'm going to add 360. That gives me how much? 390. So there's my first positive coterminal angle. Well, if I added another 360, that gives 750 degrees. That's my second positive coterminal. Now it asks you to find two negative ones. So I'm gonna, again, start with 30. How would I find negative? I would subtract 360. So when I say 30 minus 360, I get negative 330 degrees. That's one coterminal negative. To find another one, I just subtract 360 again, and that gives me negative 690 degrees. So if you want positive and negative, you add and subtract. If you start off with a negative and you want a positive, you just keep adding until it becomes negative. You just keep subtracting until it becomes positive. Same thing's going to go along here, but instead of degrees, they gave me a radian measurement. So that means I have to think in radians. So if I have pi over 3, I know that 2 pi is the same as 360 degrees. So I'm going to add 2 pi, which is over 1. I have to get a common denominator of 3. So I have pi over 3. If I change this to 3, this becomes 6, plus 6 pi over 3. A positive coterminal angle to pi over 3 would be 7 pi over 3. Now, if I'm going to find another positive coterminal, I'm going to add another 2 pi. So we're going to do the same thing, common denominator of 3. So if I, I have 7 pi plus, if I change this to 3, this becomes 6, 6 pi over 3. So another positive coterminal would be 13 pi over 3. 
Now, if I want negative, I'm going to take pi over 3, and instead of adding 2 pi, I'm just going to subtract it. So again, same process. You want a common denominator. So if I change this to 3, this becomes 6. So pi minus 6 pi gives me negative 5 pi over 3. That's my first one. If I want an additional one, I'm going to just subtract 2 pi again. Oops. Sorry. Let me erase that. That doesn't look good. Okay, so 2 pi over 1, a common denominator of 3. So this becomes 3, this becomes 6. So I have negative 5 pi minus 6 pi gives me negative 11 pi over 3. And there's my second negative coterminal angle. Okay, if I'm going to find an angle with a measure between 0 and 360 that is coterminal with the angle of 1,290 degrees in standard position. Guys, if I want it between 0 and 360, okay, they want it on one revolution around the unit circle, all you're going to do is take 1,290 and just keep subtracting 360 until you find something that is between 0 and 360. So if I have 1290 minus 360, I get 930. Well, does that number fall between 0 and 360? No. So what are we going to do? We're going to subtract another whole circle, another 360. So 930 minus 360, that gives me 570 degrees. So look, is that between 0 and 360? No. So what are we going to do? Let's subtract another whole circle. So 570 minus 360 gives me... Okay, guys, here's something really, really important that you need to talk about. When we find arc length and arc measure, and they give us a central angle in degrees, we have to first convert to radians. That is super important. If you don't do that, you'll get the question wrong. So how do we convert 30 degrees to radians? Well, think about it. This is 30 over 1. So I have either 180 over pi or pi over 180. I'm going to put 180 on the bottom because if degrees are on the bottom and degrees are, on, are the top, on the top, that means, that means the, degrees the degrees will cancel, will cancel out. out. So now I say, okay, 0 and 0 divide by 10, and then I say 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 18 six times. So my central angle in radians is pi over 6. So my formula for arc length is S equals R times theta. I have my R, which is 10. I have my theta, which is pi over 6, so now we simplify. 10 times pi is 10 pi over 6. I could divide the top and bottom by 2, and I get 5 pi over 3. Simple enough. All right, if I have a central angle in a circle and a radius of 4, so 10 by an arc length, though, find the measure. So think about this. I have S equals R times theta. So what did they give me? They gave me R. Okay, they gave me R, which is 4. They gave me the arc length, which is 6 meters. They asked me to find theta. So how would I get theta by itself? Well, if I divide both sides by R, I have theta equals S divided by R. So guys, all you got to do is just plug in. I have 6 divided by 4, which gives me, good, 3 over 2. And I know that we are measuring in radians because they gave us, the, this, this is our formula, it's always measured in radians, so I know it's 3 pi over 2, or not 3 pi over 2, I'm sorry, it's 3 over 2 radians. Okay? Again, simple enough, you're just using that one simple formula. All right, now we're talking about area of the circular sector. I'm not talking about just the measure of the pizza crust. I want to know what the area is of the entire slice of pizza. Here is the formula for that. It's 1 half times the radius squared over theta. Another way you can look at this, guys, if you want to, if you don't want to look at the 1 half, you can say radius squared of theta divided by 2. Same thing. Again, R is the radius, A is the area, and the central angle is, is the theta, but in radians. So if they give you an angle and it's not radians, you got to fix it. So in this case, it says find the area of a circle. So area equals, I'm going to say r squared over theta divided by 2. The central angle, so they tell me that theta is 60 degrees and that r is 3. 
Well, I know that I have got to change that 30 degrees. I have to convert it into radians. I'm sorry, 60 degrees and convert it into radians. So I have 180 on the bottom and pi on the top because I want my degrees to cancel out. Zeros cancel out. Six goes into 18 three times. So my theta is pi over three. So we are simply now going to put into our formula area equals my radius squared, so three squared times pi over three divided by two. So when you simplify this, you have nine times pi over three divided by two. Well, this is nine over one, so three, this becomes three pi over two. And I think the problem was in meters. Yep, so it's meters, and since we're talking about area, it's meters squared. All right, guys, so that is all you have to do for today's lesson. You should submit the notes that you just took to Canvas, and that'll be your grade for today. Thank you for watching. And then in class on Monday, we'll work all of our practice problems out, and I'll be there to help you guys and answer questions. So, all right, have a good weekend. Bye.